Hi everyone, I'm Lewis Harding Invest and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to go through my investment portfolio as of the end of February 2021 and I'm going to go through my additions, my disposals and what's new with my portfolio this month. So let's get right into it. This is not a recommendation. This video should be seen as a source of information and education only. Please seek a regulated financial advisor if you are unsure of any investment. So for anyone new around here, let's go through the details of my portfolio. So this portfolio consists of all of my investments on Free Trade, BlockFi and Crowdcube. So what I like to do personally is track them all in one big spreadsheet uh, so I know what, what my collective return is. I think, I think this is the most accurate way to, way to do it, to be fair. Um, so this is the way I do it. Essentially, I started tracking my performance from the 1st of May 2020. Um, my current value of my portfolio is £10,038. Uh, and my benchmark is a world index fund uh, and my current return is 25% compared to the FTSE All World's return of 34%. So I'm lagging behind a bit at the moment, so a bit of, a ca a bit of catching up to do. Um, so yeah, my target allocation is basically I am a value investor, so I invest in stocks which are undervalued, uh, but I look for good quality businesses which have large moats, a large competitive advantage, basically Warren Buffett style of investing. I want to be invested in big dominant companies for the long term and let compounding work for me. Um, and then alongside this, I'm looking to invest in emerging markets such as China, India, Brazil, Indonesia, these up and coming economies. Uh, and then as well as that, I've got holdings in gold, Bitcoin um, and unlisted investments. So I've got a good combination of different bits. Uh, so that's basically a, a de my details and target allocation. Uh, any questions at all, head over to lewishardiganinvest.com uh, where you'll see my investment portfolio which is updated every month and you can have a, a bit of a better in-depth look at it to be fair. I've got all my charts, got all my performance of my stocks and um, other asset classes and I put some comments on there um, on how I've been doing. So yeah, head over to my, my website and you'll find out more. So looking into my portfolio, it's clear to see that Bitcoin is the clear high flyer alongside my unlisted investments. Um, they're doing very well at the moment, I must say, and they're making up a lot of my returns. Uh, my individual stocks aren't doing too bad with 10% um, over 10% returns, which is all right, not too bad. On the other hand, my indexes are down quite a bit due to the recent dip in the market. And then gold has had a bit of a bad run recently, but like I say, I'm holding gold as a hedge. Um, but yeah, let's pick two stocks to look at. One good and one bad. Well, good, bad. One which has gone up a bit. Discovery, Discovery Inc. Um, Discovery Inc are a communi communications company and I'm very happy with this pick, as you can see from the return. Um, it's done very well for me recently um, and it's shot up absolutely crazily. And I actually still think this business is undervalued. This is how crazy the market can be. I think these shares could be worth over $60, um, but we'll soon have to see. Uh, and then onto the red picks. So, um, Unilever. So Unilever have had a very bad run recently. Um, they have gone down quite a bit. Who knows why? The financials, which came out, weren't even too bad at all. They were pretty reasonable, saying it's been COVID. Um, Brexit must be scaring the scaring. Brexit must be scaring the markets and they've been impacted. But as with all of this, I don't really care about the short term. I don't care about up and down short term. All I care about is what my return is, uh, is going to be over the decades. Um, a lot of people focus on the short term, like I've just mentioned, hypocritically. But in all honesty, I'm just doing that to pick two to show you. Like I'm honestly not bothered about the short term impact, but I'll, I think people are interested in what investments are doing. So there you go, there's my portfolio for this month. So from this month, I've had a big jump in my portfolio value. And this is basically because I have transferred £4,500 from my workplace pension to my free trade SIP. Uh, so back in January, free trade um, opened their SIP product um, and I was very, very much looking forward to, it, to using this. Uh, so in February, I managed to get my funds transferred further across from Aegon and voila, I have got way more funds to use in my portfolio and the reason why I'm doing this is because I want more control of my money investing over the long term. Um, I don't want it just in a sole index fund, I want more control. This, this is the sole reason why I've done it. Um, and then what I'm looking to do is once per year is do a, a, a part transfer of my self-invested personal pension from Aegon and then put it into my free trade portfolio. So every year I'm gonna have a decent lump sum put into my uh, portfolio, which I'm very happy about. So yeah, I hope that explains why my portfolio has increased quite a bit. 
Um, if you want to know more about free trade sip, go, go over to their website and see if it's right for you. Um, I'm confident enough to invest my own pension myself. Some people might not be, so it might not be right for you. Um, but yeah, this is one strategy I'm going to use to build my wealth going forward. Moving on to my additions for the month. So let's start with the index funds I've invested in um, with the transfer of my pension. So essentially, I believe it is a bit daft to keep all of your money in cash right now. Uh, so this is why you'll see from my update that I've only got 25% in cash. Uh, however, when my pension got transferred over, instantly I invested into the FTSE All World Index, the Emerging Markets Index, and the China and India Index uh, as per my strategy. I believe that investing for the long term, time in the market beats time in the market the majority of the time. So this means that I don't want a lot of money in cash and I believe because I'm investing for 30, 40, 50 years plus, um, I believe this is the right decision. So. Um, that's where the index, you'll see the new index holdings uh, on the portfolio, that they are all, all in my pension. Uh, essentially I've got cash in my pension ready to buy some stocks when the market does dip and then I've got uh, cash in my ISA ready to go to buy indexes when they dip. So I've got cash to buy indexes lower and I've got cash to buy stocks lower uh, and I'm hoping um, that this will do me in good stead, um, keeping some cash on the sidelines. I'm mostly invested to be honest, so it's not a big deal, um, but I've just got some cash on the sidelines waiting for opportunities, uh, which I'm always keeping my eye out on. I'm always looking at new stocks, looking at new investment opportunities. Um, so that's basically my thought process behind uh, buying the index funds. So my first top pick for February was Drax Group PLC. Uh, if you're from Yorkshire, I'm sure you'll know who Drax are. So Drax Power Station is one of the biggest power stations in the UK. Uh, they produce 6% of the UK's electricity. Um, they are becoming a fully biomass power station in the next couple of years. Uh, they currently burn wood pellets, um, so basically just tr they burn trees in the power station to produce energy. Um, and for quite a while now I've noticed that utility stocks are quite undervalued and un underloved, so it's made, put to my interest in them quite a bit. And with Drax, one thing I do know about them is, after living in the area where Drax, Drax is, I know that they're a very good employer, I know that there's good opportunities working there, I just know it's a very good place to work and I think that gives me an upper hand with a Peter Lynch style of investing where investing what you know, um, I'm going to know more about Drax than other people around the country, around the world because I live around here and essentially I think Drax could be a good investment for the very long term. They've got a very nice dividend yield of over 4%, uh, they produce constant free cash flows and like I say, I'm very happy with this pick and hopefully it does me well. So the final pick for this month was Lockheed Martin. Uh, Lockheed Martin are one of the biggest defence companies in the world. Uh, they are based in the US. Uh, they have multiple military contracts with the US to produce fighter jets and military equipment. Um, and this is one reason why I've invested in them because you've got the biggest government in the world as your main, main supplier and they've got contracts going on for a good decade or so um, producing you know, military equipment, etc. And as we all know, the US military budget is absolutely massive. It's like $250 billion, which is crazy. And Lockheed Martin gets a very nice portion of that for their coffers. Um, one thing they have is, one of their competitive advantages is that there's not many companies which can produce defense systems for the US government um, because you need to be regulated, you're monitored all the time. And Lockheed Martin have got it pretty good. So they have, a, they have very low debt, we have constant free cash flows, we're consistently profitable and with a p quite a low PE ratio I think it's a great opportunity for anyone looking for an undervalued business. Um, the world's only getting unsafer with the rise of t tensions between US and China so you'd expect military you know, spending to go up. So I think over the long term, based on the financials alone, I think it ticks every box I'm very happy with this pick. So in February I sold one stock which was Biogen. Not happy with this at all because I want to be investing in stocks for the long term and not selling. However, if I think the underlying business has changed or not what it was when I first invested or I learn some new, get some new knowledge which I don't like, I will sell the stock. I will admit that. Like I did with AT and last, AT and T last month where I realised the amount of debt they have is the, is the, is the equivalent of the, the economy of New Zealand. I think that's a decent reason to sell. However, the Biogen Essentially, they are a pharmaceutical company who produce a lot of drugs and one of their main drugs is to do with Alzheimer's. This drug has been going through regula regula regulation issues 
Um, let me get my words out. <laughs> um, and it doesn't look like the drug is going to be successful. And this drug may, is going to make up a lot of their sales. I've got other drugs coming up ex expiring. And essentially, I've been reading into, into the company and some of the things they've been doing on the trials have been great. Fudging numbers, which is not good at all. It does not give me confidence in management if the company is fudging numbers to get drugs through trials. I don't want to be investing in companies like that. Um, and essentially, with these drugs, we've got a lot of drugs expiring where other pharma companies are going to be making the same drugs or similar drugs. Their turnover is just going to be decreasing over the next few years. And don't get me wrong, we have a good financial position, good profits, good cash flows. But if their turnover is decreasing by like a quarter, that's a big concern for me. Um, no matter how good or profitable or low debt the business is, if that turnover decreases by 25%, that is a big deal to me. And for me, dominant companies do not do that. They keep their turnover consistent unless their business model is fundamentally changing, which is very, very rare. So yeah, that's basically it. Sold Biogen. If you wanna if you wanna know more why I did, just send me a message. I'm more than happy to chat about it. So thank you very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed my portfolio update for February 2021. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please like, comment, subscribe. I'd really appreciate it to get my word out in the investing community. And I have updated my recommendations page on my website. So instead of putting all my affiliate links below in the YouTube video, you can go onto my recommendations page on my website where you can view all my recommendations for free shares, free Bitcoin, uh, free trials, and a full library of books, which I consider to be some of the best out there for investing, personal finance, and development. So head over to my website, lewishardinginvest.com slash recommendations, and head over there to see services which I endorse and use myself. Um, and if you would like a free share with free trade, um, in the description below there is a link and you can get a free share with free trade and if you top up uh, at least two one pound i think it is you get a free share um, and also if you like free bitcoin with blockfi if you send a hundred dollars worth of bitcoin over to blockfi you will get ten dollars for free thank you very much for watching today's video i will see you next time